Now there are plenty of sports coupes around in the market today and the latest to join that fray is the Peugeot RCZR, the fastest and most powerful car ever from the French brand. Now to find a rival to put it up against is not such an easy task. There are more powerful, more expensive and more luxurious small coupes. But in terms of style, nothing comes closer to it than this, the Audi TT. The German coupe is considered one of the design icons of the last 20 years. And yet the Peugeot, while not as common on the roads, is just as stylish. Audi offers a number of different variants across the TT range, from an entry-level front-wheel drive with a 1.8-litre turbocharged four-cylinder, right up to the flagship TTRS with a stonking 250 kilowatt five-cylinder turbo engine. The TTS model closely matches the RCZR on maximum power, producing an identical 200 kilowatts, but it costs considerably more than the little Frenchie. So today, we've picked the mid-spec 2.0-litre TFSI Quattro, which has the same 2.0-litre engine, but produces 155 kilowatts of power and 350 newton metres of torque, which Audi claims makes it good for a 5.7 second sprint to 100 kilometres an hour and an average fuel consumption of 7.2 litres per 100 k's. It does cost a bit more than the Peugeot at 79,450 plus on-road costs, but compensates for the difference as it is only available with a six-speed dual-clutch automatic and now comes with a sportier S-Line competition pack that includes 19-inch alloy wheels and the fixed rear wing from the TTRS. It's a great little engine that's smooth and has this really nice sort of induction note when you get into it that revs to about six and a half grand and the DSG gearbox is really smooth and easy to use. Now with the all-wheel drive system it's got this really neutral balance to the way it handles and while it's not quite as playful as the Peugeot it still does feel more like a front-wheel drive car than a traditional all-wheel drive car. And when you get into it, the front wheels will still light up under heavy acceleration. And that's because it doesn't have the limited slip diff that the Peugeot has, which provides it with really good traction out of the corners. The steering though on the Audi feels a little bit more natural and it's got great sort of turn in and really good mid corner grip. As for the cabin, well, this one sits near the bottom of the TT ladder and you can sort of see it doesn't have some of the features or look quite as special as the Peugeot. It's still a great design, but the materials are starting to look a little bit dated. And while the seats are comfortable, they're not quite up to scratch with the Peugeot. However, the driving position in this TT is fantastic. Nice and low, and the steering wheel falls perfectly to hand. And in terms of space and practicality in the back, like the Peugeot, it's not really suited for tall adults, but probably a little bit more practical than in the RCZR. Now, in terms of comfort, you could live with the TT quite easily every day, but it's quite sharp on the ride, and certainly doesn't have that delicate balance between comfort and handling that the Peugeot does. The RCZR has been hand-built by Peugeot's motorsport division and is powered by a 1.6 litre four-cylinder that generates 199 kilowatts and 330 newton metres. A figure that matches legitimate supercars for specific output or the amount of power produced per litre of engine capacity. Despite it driving only the front wheels through a six-speed manual gearbox, it has a Torsen limited slip diff, which Peugeot claims helps it accelerate to 100 kilometres an hour in 5.9 seconds, and it can consume an average of 6.3 litres per 100 k's. The RCZR commands a $10,000 premium over the standard RCZ with a sticker price of 68,900 plus on-road costs. But not only does it come with more power, it has upgraded brakes, suspension settings, and a host of visual and cabin tweaks to sit at the top of its range. Now the cabin of the RCZR feels immediately a bit more special than it does in the Audi, in terms of it's got a leather top dash and the design of it is quite unique. It's also got more features, including sat-nav in a little pop-up screen in the middle of the dash. One bugbear though is that sat-nav system is quite confusing to use. Now the seats in the RCZR are a real standout particularly the extra shoulder support that you're getting from this side bolstering, but they're also quite comfortable to live with every day. The driving position, however, is a little bit awkward. The pedals are sort of offset and the steering wheel doesn't fall to hand quite as nicely. Now it is only available with a six speed manual gearbox and it's quite light and easy to use with a good clutch action and nice mechanical feel to the shift. And the engine, well, 
it builds up steam pretty quickly for a 1.6 litre turbocharged four cylinder and has a really good spread of torque right across the rev range and there's not as much lag as you'd expect from a highly strung small capacity engine. And as for the way it handles, well it's got electric steering which feels a little bit weird just off centre but has really good feedback once you're in the twisty bits. You can literally stand on the accelerator and the car just turns in even sharper. And as for the balance, well it's really quite neutral. It runs on a quite a long wheelbase for a small car, but in typical French fashion, it still is a little bit playful. It's also got quite decent brakes, 330 millimeter front discs from Alcon with four piston calipers. Now, while that sounds pretty impressive on paper, they don't perform as well as I expected. The standout, however, of the RCZR is that balance it has between handling and comfort. Now that's been a trait of French car makers for a long time, but Peugeot sort of went off the rails for the last couple of generations. This, however, rekindles that beautiful, as I said, balance between soaking up the bumps and offering plenty of grip. It's got plenty of character, this car, and I really like it. While neither of these coupes are practical family runabouts, nor are they absolute rocket ships, they do mix style with substance and are great fun to drive. Well, just look at them. There is no doubt that the Audi TT and the Peugeot RCZ set the benchmarks for design in this small coupe class. But which one would I pick? Well, today it's going to the Peugeot RCZR. It's got a great balance between everyday comfort and that thrilling performance. But there is an all new Audi TT just around the corner, and that is sure to raise the bar yet again.